Hello and welcome to Authentic Conversations Emoji. How are you? I'm going to wait a few moments and wait for people to come in. Today is Thursday. The week is off and gone again. It's crazy. While we're waiting for people to come in, we'll just wait. I can't see who's on, so just say hello if you can. And um, my name is Mojisola Wilson, and this is Moji's World. Authentic Conversation is the name of the show. I thank you for joining. Today's conversations is um, social media educates. Join me. Hello and welcome to Authentic Conversations Emoji. How are you? I can't see your name, so please do me a favor. This video, we're talking about social media etiquette because it seems like a lot of people don't have it. Let me get my glasses on because I can't see, you know. Oh, God. Hey, Olu, how are you? Ruthie, it's good to see you. Patricia, it's good to see you. Anike, hi, how are you? Welcome and Thank you for joining me. It's very important that we have these authentic conversations with each other. Um, I made a post last week and it went crazy. I was like, Whoa, what is going on with some people? I mean, if I sit in my living room, which my social media page is my living room, and you come in uninvited, and yes, it's a public page, but you still come in uninvited. There's absolutely no reason to go bonkers. I mean, a lot of people lack emotional in intelligence. A lot of people lack compassion. A lot of people lack just educate. I mean, what happened to our home training? Maybe it's because I'm mad old because the Twitter generation is a generation of wild, wild animals. The Twitter generations is a bunch of old, young people that just lack emotional intelligence. Social media etiquette, it's something simple. It's hello, please, and thank you. The same things we use in real life, isn't it? I mean, think about it. The same things you do in real life is what you're supposed to do on social media. We live in a social media time era when before you apply for a job, when you apply for a job, they'll take your resume and look at it and say, oh, wow, what an amazing person. The resume looks fantastic. The first thing they do is go search for you on social media. They search for your page. They look at what you post. They look at how you bully people or troll people and you won't get the job. Why is it that when you're growing up, your parents tell you to call your elders, at least in most parts of civilized countries, because I live in America and Americans call elders, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. In Nigeria, it's even more important. Ruthie, you understand what I'm saying because you're from the South. People say hello, good afternoon, ma'am, good afternoon, sir, in the real world. See, I think God used the coronavirus to make a slight correction in the world, not in the people that died, but to put us into isolation because social media has now become a place where people are meeting their loved ones, people are meeting each other and falling in love, we're making friends on social media, Olu lives in the UK. I mean, where would I have ever met someone like Olu for crying out loud? I wouldn't, but social media afforded me that luxury to mingle with presidential candidates, to meet, mingle with ministers, to mingle with, there's, I even have a guy that's a minister of something, something of Nigeria on my page. I have senators on my page. I have Mr. Brahma on my page. How old I have met them? Social media affords us the luxury of meeting so many different people. But a lot of people leave, they wake up in the morning and as soon as they get behind the keyboard, they think they're like Goliath. Forgetting that David, David, as small as David is, was much more intelligent than Goliath. And he had more faith than Goliath. So there's a lot of people in the background because they have a keyboard between them and the person they're trolling. They forget. They forget their manners because they want to feel important, because they feel insignificant in the world. 
And a lot of times, you know, Patricia, I get up, I used to get upset and I'll be hurt and I would be really hurt. But then I decided to do research on social media etiquette, social media bullying, social media. I did a lot of research. I read a lot, a lot of articles. And then I went on, on YouTube and I started doing research. And I found out that a lot of people are killing themselves after they've been trolled by somebody that just think he has a right to come to your page and tell you how to live your life. It's like, whoa. We're talking about human rights here. We're talking about having been, you know, being able to live your authentic life as you see fit without anybody trolling you. We're talking about people understanding that whatever they do on social media, you're leaving a footprint. Everything you post, even if you delete it, Facebook still has it. Ooh, really? Yeah. Facebook still has it. Let's talk about the five major issues on social media. Basic. Somebody, I get a lot of friend requests from people. I don't know you. You don't know me. But you'll send me a friend request and then get upset because I didn't accept it. I don't know you. What you should have done, in my opinion, social media etiquette and what a lot of the professionals say is that when you send somebody a friend request, you tell them, hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. I saw you on Oh, I saw your video and these are my views, yada, 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 so that I understand that we have something in common. You know, because sometimes uh, there's a lot of fake accounts on social media, a lot of Nigerians and non-Nigerians. It's called 419 in some places. It's called catfishing in America. There's a whole TV show dedicated to catfishing, which is when people create fake accounts and pretend to be who they're not. Hi, Janet and they pretend to be who they're not. So social media is a place where there's a lot of good, but there's a lot of bad people out there. And if they don't, I don't, you know, I'm one of those people that I believe people don't mean to be bad. It's just if you're living in your face to face and you see somebody living their authentic life, half the time, I'm telling you, people get upset. They're like, oh, they just have to make your life miserable. A lot of cowards. I've been calling people that troll me. Last week I posted something on my page and people came after me quoting the Bible and this, I can't quote the Bible. I can't fight with people over the Bible. I didn't write the Bible, but I know for a fact from studying the Bible that the Bible was written many, many years ago. There's no cell phones. There's no cars in there. There's no jet plane. There's no private plane. There's no name it microwaves or refrigerators in the Bible, but we all use them because evolution happens. Nothing stays the same forever except the Bible. See, I always say I'm a spiritualist. I don't believe in people that say they're religious because religion has set a lot of people mad. It's made a lot, a lot, of created a whole lot of mad people in the world. White, black, green. I mean, there was a guy, um, Jim Crow or somebody that had a little compound where he had people come in and they said that they came to believe in God. And the guy told them all to drink poison and they all drank poison and they died. One man. One man, hi, Kelvin, one man got over a thousand people to drink poison in the name of God. God is an awesome God, but that's not the show for today. Let's focus on the topic, which is social media etiquette. What gives another man the right to come to somebody else's page and call them an abomination, call them a bitch, call them, you know, tell them how horrible they are. Do you guys even know that there's a human being behind those words that are posted on their own page? Like I said before, to those of you just joining, I don't know about Nigeria because in Nigeria, when you know somebody, you get a job. You might not even be qualified for the job. There's some, you can get a job as a brain surgeon if you know the right people and you're really a bricklayer. In America, if you apply for a job, human resources will verify your information and then they go on your social media page to see if who you are. They go on your social media page to see what you are they go on your social media page to see what your character is. So a lot of you guys that are thinking you're coming to America and you want to come and live in the United States, America, the American government now goes to your social media page. If you're a terrorist, if you're one of those people that bashes gay people, that bashes Muslim, that bashes Christians, that fights with people for no reason and you bully people, you're not getting the visa. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account because you're considered a terrorist. If you've ever threatened anybody on social media, you're not getting your visa to the UK and you can Google these things. This is a fact. 
Social media etiquette is the same etiquette you would use in real life. You're not going to come on my to my front door where I'm living because, oh, you heard about Moji Solo Wilson. And come knock on my door and then get upset if I don't open the door. You didn't introduce yourself. So number one, social media etiquette, if you're sending somebody a friend request, send them a little note. Hi, Moji, I saw your show and this is what I think, yada, yada, yada. And if I accept you, she could to me. I don't take a lot of people, so don't please don't friend request me. Make sure you follow me on this page. Like the page, follow this page so that we can, if I if we get along on my public page and you invite, I can invite you to go on my personal page. That's how people do it. You don't just meet somebody today and you're friends. We're acquaintances first and then we build a relationship because of the way we interact with each other. People get upset when they send out friend requests and somebody doesn't take it. If I go to your page and I don't really know you, but you're a nice person, but you're one of those people that post a lot of crap so that you can get likes, so you can get followers. I'm not going to accept you. If I go to your page and you're bashing Muslim women, I'm not taking you. I believe in what? I believe in compassion, empathy. Our principles has to align. That's what friends are. People say, oh, you, why don't you take people on your page? I'm not taking you on my page because I don't know you. I'm not going to allow you into my living room to come and chill and serve you drinks, and then I don't know you. You could be a serial killer. You could be an ax murderer. You could be a child molester. You could be anything. And a lot of people with fake names, I get it that a lot of you guys, a lot of things that you do on social media, Mr. Burama, I don't know, that's his name. Jenna Johnson, that's her name. Me, that's my name. On my ID, on all my paperwork, everything. But a lot of you guys come up with these mbati mbati names and you think you have a right to be on somebody's page and you get upset. If I meet you and you are not telling me, you come to me and you say your big daddy came. I'm sorry. Why would I want to interact with you? It is the same thing on social media. Social media is basic common decency. Common decency. The things you won't say to my face, you should not be saying it on my thread. You should not be saying it on anybody's thread. And we have to remember that they're human beings attached to their pages. So when you go to somebody's pages and you're debating, I have no issues with people debating, right? I don't, I love debate. I love a good, hearty debate because that's how we learn. I learn it, I love diversity of thought. That's how we learn. There's nothing wrong with you not liking me, not liking gay, being gay, so don't be gay. God did not create you to be gay anyway, so don't be gay. But me, this is who I am. If I am a gay woman that's comfortable and happy in her skin, why would you feel like you need to drag me and cut me up into little pieces? Do you think I don't have feelings? Do you think I don't have emotions? Or do you think my children will not go on that page and read the things that are being said about their parents who did not do anything wrong, but just be herself? I have seen pages where a woman posted pictures of her, her child and people think they have the right to come there and tell the woman that your child is fat. You need to put her in a, in, on a diet. <gasps> My God, what kind of people are we, so are we around? There's a block and delete button. This page, public page, I don't mind when we have difference in opinions, you know? So Muslims don't eat pork. I always say that. Muslims don't eat pork. They don't go around killing people that eat pork. They just don't eat pork. It doesn't mean that you cannot learn something from that person that does not eat pork. Don't eat pork. Eat pork if you want to. They don't eat pork. So if a Muslim that doesn't eat pork is on your page because you post a pork dish and starts abusing your father, your mother, your cousin, your dog, your cat, hello, they would look crazy. There are too many people all around this, this world that have mental illness because only a person with mental illness or a miserable human being will go to somebody's page and just start tearing them up. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me, but hey, what do I know? I mean, let's see, let's, let me take a few comments. Mr. Buraimo says the internet is the new wild west. Yes, it is, sir. There's no enforceable mechanism that's punitive the, we must teach our children and young adults about the dangers of trolling. School counselors spend inordinate, inordinate time counseling kids and parents online. The majority of parents and adults 
lack all the etiquettes you are discussing today. Yes, sir, Mr. Buraimo. But part of the problem is that when people, there's this thing that I learned. I was talking to somebody the other day when I was Googling um, social media etiquette. They were talking about bystander intervention because a lot of bullies are actually cowards, sir. I've known stories when I went searching on social media, I found a lot of stories about young nine, 10, 11 year olds that committed suicide. They actually, there was actually a kid that was being bullied because they said she was fat. And people were trolling her and abusing her every day. They would go on her page. She could post the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. People would come there and tell her you are a fat pig. You should kill yourself. You're an abomination. You look horrible. The girl, after six months of being bullied on social media, committed suicide. When you troll people, you erode their identity. You erode their confidence. You erode their sense of self. I'm 55. There's no eroding. It hurts me. I have cried before because people bullied me. But one of the things I stopped doing is allowing them to get away with it. And I'm so grateful that in the past few weeks, I have noticed a lot of people are beginning to stand up for other people, not because they know them, but because they're beginning to understand that it could be you. We talked about, like, a few days ago, we talked about, I did a show where we talked about the Susanna Dekoka uh, saga, where she abused Igbo people, right? Igbo people. Now, my thing was, see, people thought I was going to come here and abuse Susan because she's not my friend. I really don't like her because she trolled me and no, no, no. No, we, me, I'm a truth speaker. People that speak the truth don't have a lot of friends. That's a fact. See, when you allow other people to be trolled, when those trollers run out of somebody, they're coming for you. So bottom line is, at the end of the day, we are responsible for our surroundings. I open up this page to share information with people, to people with the wisdom that I pay dearly for. And people come there and they troll me because they, they feel less. When you're trolling somebody, pretty much all he says about you is that you lack self, yeah, self-respect. Because people that respect themselves respect other people. Remember in the Bible somewhere where people are always throwing at me, it says, love your neighbors as thyself. Problem is that a lot of people don't love themselves because when you love yourself, you just exude joy, you exude happiness, you're smiling. You also want other people to feel good about themselves. Most people don't love themselves. Social media etiquette is the same etiquette that we practice outside in real life. Because when I meet Mr. Buraima, I had never met him face to face, but we've been Facebook friends for a very long time. One of the first things I notice is I'm not sure if he's older than me or if I'm older than him. To be on the safe side, I start calling him Mr. Mr. Buraima. I'm a 55 year old. I have called 25 year old auntie and, and, and Mrs. or Ms. because I don't know their age. It's called respecting myself. I'm not respecting them because I respect myself it bleeds into their lives, right? It's respecting myself. So when you respect yourself, then you respect other people. When you love yourself, you love other people. Olu says, someone posted something nine years ago when she was young, lost a great job once her new boss saw it. It was a racist comment. Olu, let me tell you a story. There was an actress in, um, in, in the UK that was supposed to be, uh, when she was starving as an actress, let me, it's, it's, I laugh every time I hear that, I, I remember the story. She had posted something about, it's all gay people, kiniko, kiniko, no problem. Patricia, let me tell you something. She forgot that the industry that she's going into, the acting world, the movie world, anywhere, there's gay people everywhere. But most people in the entertainment business are LGBTQ. So when she was waitressing, uh, you know, bossing tables in restaurants and stuff. She had abused gay people. Bam, bam, and then she got the job to play the lead role in The Color Purple on the biggest stage in the UK. I forget her name. While they were doing research on her background, because they always, in America, in the, in, in the, in the civilized world, they always do research on that stuff from your back does not come and bite them, the company. When they did the research, they found out that she had been um, very mean and cruel and she had been trolling gay people. She lost the job. Her, her, her agent dropped her. She lost the contract. 
for and in America they do that. If you troll me and I know where you are, because we have people that we can pay to find you, and I know where you work, I will send all your screenshots of what you've said to me that hurt me. I will send it to the police. I will send it to uh, your job. You will lose your job. And also you will be reported to the police as a person that has um, abused me and it will be called a racial crime or a um, gender crime or whatever crime it is. LGBTQ bashing is illegal in America. You can't come here and troll me in America. If you live in America, I'll find you and I'll report to you. You lose your job. You lose your job and you can get arrested. Or I can personally sue you for, for emotional abuse and all kinds of, kind of stuff. Patricia says, I don't have time for that anymore. I just blocked the person. Shuku to you. Problem with when you block the person, which I do as well, you're giving them permission to go to somebody else's page because now they can't troll you. They're going to go and troll somebody that's not as strong as you. What I do is I report their pages to Facebook. It takes Facebook about maybe 48 hours, maybe sometimes a long time, you know, but they'll track them down. They'll get the information. They either suspend them for maybe 30 days the last guy I did that to, they took his page down for 30 whole days. I have been on people's pages that had 200,000 followers, but because they were trolling me and I kept reporting them and I kept telling everybody to report that person, they took their pages down, Poof! they had to start all over again. Facebook Editate, so social media Editate is simple. It's yes, please, and thank you. The same thing your mother taught you when you were two years old, to say please and to say thank you and to say to apologize when you do something wrong. It's exactly the same thing. There's nothing. We have spent majority of our lives, majority of our lives we spend on social media these days. A lot of us have met our, our, our life partners online. A lot of us have met, met our best friends online. A lot of us are selling things online. We're doing business online. We're getting jobs online. We're even now going to church online because coronavirus has come and said, okay, you people need to sit down for a minute. Check yourselves. Coronavirus, I believe, was sent to us by the universe. I don't know why. To check ourselves. Because the, the world was becoming a wild, wild west. You know, you have people sitting in their face to face coming on people's pages because they're living a miserable life with fake names, fake profile. The guy that trolled me the most like last week, Tuesday, I think it was, I forget his name because it doesn't really make a difference to me, was he lives in a face to face with five people. I called him. I have his number. I kept challenging him to come on my page. Come, explain to me why you feel you have the right to come and to call me an abomination, to come and abuse everybody, my whole lineage mother was abused what makes people think they have the right to come on people's pages and start saying do you know who your father is yeah do you know who my father is do you know have an do you have an, an idea of the relationship i have with my people no you don't but people come and they just throw up on people's pages it's disgusting it's disgusting it's disgusting but we cannot allow each other to continue to do that and that's part of the problem. It's time that we get with the program and understand that we're hurting people. I saw a, a thing yesterday. I was so, so broken. Yesterday, I was so sad. A young man committed suicide in Nigeria. And then none of us know why. Not yet, anyways. Not yet. Two months ago. Oh, no, last month. A young Nigerian girl called Tolu committed suicide. I said on my personal page yesterday, you know, I'm one of those people that believes big time in education, go to school, engage with people, da, 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 da. Make, be the best version of yourself. I don't care if you're straight, gay or crooked, just go to school. But then they see people like me sitting here and I'm being abused and I'm being slashed and blah, blah. and then the kids are going, why am I, go why am I doing all of this anyways? When no matter who you are, people that don't know me, come on my page and they abuse my lineage. They abuse, I mean, whoa. Some guy said, oh my God, have they following you blindly? I looked at him and said, I wasn't going to answer. Then I thought about it and I'm like, no, you must have been blind and deaf because I am an out proud African lesbian married woman. 
I say it in every video I do, not because I'm trying to throw it in anybody's face, because I want you to know that part of my identity, like you, you talk about your husband, you talk about your wife. I want people to be able to, I want to be comfortable. I'm giving you my intellectual property. You don't like me, get off my page. That's what normal people do. Get off the page. Don't come to the page. Unfollow, unlike, actually block me, Seth. Do me a favor and block me. Because God forbid, I give you information that will educate you. God forbid, I share something that will open your heart a little bit. God forbid, I give you something to think about. Which is basically that human beings are behind the keyboard. Every time I've called or invited somebody trolling me to come to the show with their face, they've always turned me down. The one time I was fortunate enough to have a guy come on when he was trolling me, he actually came on, on the phone, and then he inboxed me and said, oh, you know, I didn't really understand, and I'm sorry, and that, uh, but this is the culture, this is what we were taught. Okay, many years ago in, in the part of Nigeria, they used to kill twins. I didn't make it up, Google it. Many, many years ago, in parts of Nigeria, when a woman gave birth to twins, they would kill the twins because they were assumed to be products of the devil. Can you imagine? And then some Oyibo woman, Mary Slessor or something came in and said, no, 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 you can't be, this is life. And now the Yoruba culture, you get twins, they start cooking beans with coconuts, they start doing all kinds of things, and they celebrate the lives of the twins because now they know better. At one point, they used to take albino to do voodoo. Now they know better. You know, there's a lot of things we did in Nigeria, African cultures that were not, did not make sense. But once they're enlightened, they know better. So look, let me get off the trolling. Let me take the trolling to the next level. Let me take you back, way back, to how we used to get married in Nigeria or in Africa. It used to be arranged marriages, right? Shukra. Actually, no, let me use my grandfather as an example. My grandfather had a lot of wives, a lot of kids, right? So when you do business in the olden days with families and you want to keep the wealth together, so before you even have children or grandchildren, you promise your first daughter to Alaji Musa's first son. The poor girl's never been born. The poor guy is never, he's not even born yet. And they already gave you away to each other. It's, they betrothed you to somebody else. That was the culture way back then. Right? So Shukura gets born. She's, Shukura is thinking, oh my God, I'm going to school. I'm going to be all fabulous. Uh, and they send her to the best schools all over the world, right? Poor Shukura doesn't know that all the schools she's going to in the world, the PhD and the Kinikon, they've promised that to Baba Shukura down the block or Baba Temedu. So at 16, 13, 14, they're plucking these young girls and they're marrying them off to people they've never met. They're meeting them for the first time on their marriage on the wedding nights. I watched a documentary last night and I cried my eyes out while doing research for this show. That's how it happened in the past. And I'm sure it's still happening in some parts of the world, like India and all that stuff. But what we've learned again is that that does not work. It breaks the girls. We also learned in the past Nigerian men and a lot of our cultures, even Oyibo men, were marrying 12, 13 year olds. Later, we found out that it's not good for the um, body composition of the girls. It destroys their womb, it destroys a lot. It makes them, you know, it just destroys their person because they're not emotionally or mentally ready for that. Excuse me. So now, here we are. Now we allow, we're allowed to court each other, we're allowed to date. Basically, what I'm trying to say, folks, is that the past, what we used to do in the culture of the past, no, a lot of them no longer work today. So when people are telling me it's not our culture, in the past, Yorubas could not marry Hausa, Hausa could not marry Igbo, Igbo could not marry, uh, ne, 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 ne. it was all segregation and division. Now you find Yorubas marrying Kalaba, Kalaba marrying evolution. The only people that become successful in this world are people that have open minds, are people that have manners, as in good manners. Yes, please, and thank you. See those three things? Yes, I mean, 
please, thank you. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry when you do something to hurt people. That's part of social media because when you type things, it doesn't, people don't understand. They don't get the emotions behind the words. Social media etiquette is so simple. The way you will treat, I would treat um, Lara if she comes into my home. I would feed her. I would give her water. I would ask her if I can give her some food or something because that's what we do. That's it. When somebody comes on your Facebook page, they're coming into your world. They're coming into your space. When you come to my page and you read my post, if you don't like it, waka pass. If you come back again and you read something you don't like, do what Moji do. Be like Moji. Unfriend the person, unfollow the person, block them. Because every time, the reason why I don't take every Tom, Dick and Jones on my page is because every time I take somebody on my page and I post something for my friends, their friends get to see it. So what did I start doing? If I have you on my page and your friend is always trolling me, I delete you, which means I just deleted your friend. Social media etiquette is to treat people, number two. Number one is when you want to be a friend of somebody, introduce yourself. Send me the friend request, but also send me a little bit about you. Most people lie about themselves anyway. Most names on social media are fake. They're not real. And, you know, there was a person I knew for a long time. I forget the guy's name. It was on my page. And I started to look and look and look. And I'm like, wait, I don't really know this person. We've been on the same social media page for 10 years. He doesn't post anything personal. But every time I post, he's the first person to like it, Buzza. And then he'll share it to his page. But he doesn't, I don't know anything about him. I don't even know his real name. I don't know if he's married. I don't know if he's single. I don't know mm -mm, nothing. So I deleted him. And then he came and he said, ah, Auntie Moji, you, you unfriended me. I said, yes. He said, why? And I said, because I don't know you. You're not my friend. The name you have here is not your real name. I've asked 10 people if they know you and not one single person knows you personally. Social media etiquette. Would you just allow some weary person on your page, in your living room? Would you open your door and say, everybody come, 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 oh yeah? Because you're trying to collect 5,000 people. 5,000 mad people that you don't know. 5,000. How do you, 5,000 friends, really? I ran across a quote the other day that said, if you're everybody's friend, you are nobody's friend. Because people, when you are my friend, we're loyal to each other. If you're my friend, there's different kinds of friendships. So there's friends that are just acquaintances. There's friends that are friends like sisters and, you know, that you call your sister and your brother. Those are the friends that will go to the back for you. Those are the friends that if you're having a rough day, you can pick up at the phone at 3 a.m. in the morning and they have your back. Some of us are lucky to have some of those. But you can't have 5,000 friends. For most people, it's a numbers game. Quality over quantity. When you come into a conversation, social media educate. Remember, the same thing you will do. You won't just go to somebody's house while they're talking to their friend and just branch and jump inside the conversation without finding out what they're talking about, even if it's your friend. When you go on Friday nights, we used to have this thing where we have people over, friends over, we play cards, we play games and all that stuff. Somebody that just walked in is not going to come in and just jump in the conversation. They're going to, first of all, try and find what it is that we're talking about, right? What is the conversation about? What is the topic? What is the emotion behind the conversation? Where uh, you guys will just come on people's, boo, 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 boo. you just, uh, uh, wait, wait, read the whole thread, read the commentary on the thread. Ask questions if you don't understand. Don't come there and start acting like your professor and you just know everything. You know your life. What works in your village doesn't work in mine. In a kitty, we have different, different dialects. We eat pounded yam that's three days old. In Lagos, you try and offer somebody pounded yam from the day before, they'll tell you, hell no. People are different. Diversity of thought allows us to grow. We can debate issues, but this thing that people do these days is very scary. This trolling that people do is making people commit suicide. This trolling that you do is breaking people. Thank God for God. A lot of young people are killing themselves. And all this fake life on social media where you ain't got jack. 
A lot of social media rock stars are living in face to face. It's the funniest thing. You know, when they do their gra 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 gra, they forget. I have people that come into my inbox that I give money to, and then I see them doing giveaways. And you guys are thinking they're wonderful, they're superstar, they're rock star. I have people that will take something off my page and move it around and then go post it. They plagiarize my, my post. I've, I call them out. I just started calling them out because in the past, I will just walk up ass. Because I used to think, oh my God, you know, it's an honor. Imitation is the greatest honor. No, this is how Nigeria go where it is. This is how America go where it is. Where we overlook people that are racist, people that are bigots, people that are, name it, name it. We walk or pass them. So they go on and do the same thing to other people. On social media, you have people meeting somebody on social media. And then especially a lot of young women, they'll meet somebody on social media with a fake name. You don't know their name. You don't know their address. You don't know who they are. You don't know anybody they know. But you're going to go and meet them in a hotel room. And you get upset. <laughs> and <you're from laughs> you get upset when they're not who they say they are. People that post, people that have money don't really flaunt it. All these people throwing money around, oh, they're either thieves or they're holies. Half the people that are on social media driving BMWs in America, they pay note. Half of them are living in projects in London, in government housing. They don't have money, but because they're in America, you guys think they're hot shit. I had a friend who went out and, and, and you know, he da she dated somebody in Nigeria. I tell this story every year to remind people. She dated a, a security guard in America who came to Nigeria spending 375 Naira to $1. So the guy took one uh, 3000 to Nigeria. That was a million Naira. Went to his village and started spending money. Yafu, yafu. This woman thought he, she was mad. She, was, she saw money and her eyes went to And then, oh, my God, it's from America. Oh, my goodness. She sold her shop. The woman had a shop, had a car, had built her own house. She sold her shop. She sold her shop. She sold her car. She sold everything and married this guy that she did not go to his family house to go and find out if there's a gutter running through the home. She, I mean, when a person walks in and starts saying, I want to, I'm going to, I'm kidding, or not proper English. Never once asking what did he do for work. Never asking how is life in America. The guy lived in a project in a two bedroom apartment with another person and the guy's wife. Basically a face to face in America. Government subsidized housing. She had a three bedroom house in Nigeria that she's paid for. She had her own car that she paid for. She had her own little shop in the market that she paid for. Sold everything married the guy and on the first day as soon as she lands Bulga, the guy shows up in a chitty chitty bang bang if you don't know the movie chitty chitty bang bang it's an old raggedy ass car that could fly that could go on water that could... to pick up raggedy old car and then they got to the house and this woman that had a three bedroom house three bedroom house fully paid for in Nigeria, had to move into a face-to-face, -face, that's what I call them, where you're sharing the kitchen and the bathroom in America, in the project, where people pee in the elevator, where people shoot up drugs, in a bad, the worst project in, 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 in Staten Island then. She gave up her life, where she was going to country club, Ikoyirabi, Lagos club to swim and play tennis, because she thought she had somebody. Social media etiquette, you check, you double check, you four-pull check, you Skype, and make sure that you get references from people that know them, watch the people. And then she started crying. She wanted to kill herself. She gave up so much. Honey, no, you were greedy. You were greedy. You thought you just met Darosha. You thought you met who? Steve Jobs? From the way the guy speaks English, you, could have, you would have known anyways. From the fact that he didn't bring you to his house in Nigeria, you should have known. From the fact that when you call him, you were hearing people in the background and he always was in the store. According to the story she told me, you should have known. I get a lot of stories in my inbox who are lie. I'm just not one of those people that post and post. I just started talking about people's stories. I will talk about my life freely. 
But the truth is that social media etiquette, you have to check and see who you're dealing with. Trolling people, people, there's catfishing, a lot of catfishing on social media. People will sit on your page. You guys have 5,000 people on your page. How many do you really engage with? Think about it. I only engage with like 30 or 40 people on my page. The same 30, 40. If I post a picture of myself, I might get 40, 50 likes. Because I don't make my pictures, a lot of my pictures public anymore. Because whatever, you know, trollers pick it up and then they sell it to the bloggers and can you console? My private page is my private page. But I have friends that make their pictures public and they just put things on the internet, bow, bow because they want followers, they want people to clap for them. They talk about things they would normal, never talk about. How, who, which one of you guys is going to go and post about penis and vagina on your page? Will you be in your house having dinner with your friends and be talking about penises and vaginas and all that stuff? I have never been to a dinner party where that was a conversation, it just doesn't happen. But people do it on social media. People do it on social media. And we don't check them. That's part of the problem. The people I will not have in my house, I no longer allow on my on my personal page because there's too many mad people in the world these days. So G Mr. G.D. Brown says, this is a very important topic. The three traits that you have mentioned, emotional in intelligence, empathy and common decency, remind me of what people erroneously about other people, other, another trait, leadership. People often say leaders are born and not made. What we now see is that leadership is a trainable and teachable skill or trait. I am convinced that emotional intelligence, empathy, and decency can be taught and learned either in a formal setting or an informal setting. Absolutely right. The reason I do this authentic conversations here is to actually talk and teach and learn because nobody knows it all. I sit here with a small window into my life because I find that a lot of people, uh, they live in a very myopic world. You know, even when you take Nigerians that come from Nigeria and they migrate, if you take immigrants, when we get here, for most people, I was lucky, I was plucked out at a very young age and my foster, my yeah, I call them foster parents, were Irish. So I grew up with other cultures. But most Nigerians, when they leave Nigeria, they stay in the same cocoon. So when you're talking about learning, the same Nigerians that are burning people on the streets in Nigeria, the same Nigerians that are burning people on this internet living in America, they're all the same because the mentality was never aligned with the new culture of the place that they're in. There's accountability in America. But when people get behind the the keyboard, they forget because their mentality is still that of the place they come from where there's no rules and there's no laws. Empathy, compassion, emotional intelligence is very important. Let's take the emotional intelligence, Jude. It's very important we talk about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is what makes me not post something that I would think Olaolu, because I know her story, might think that I'm talking about her. That's emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is why Mr. Brahma, who just posted, oh, maybe my fish died. Emotional intelligence is the reason why I, Moji, will not go and post a brand new fish that I'm planning to eat for lunch. It sounds stupid, right? You have to understand that compassion, empathy, walks hand in hand with emotional intelligence. If people tell me, oh, I have a right to say anything I want on your page. No, you don't. Emotional intelligence is what makes you realize that people have feelings. Emotional intelligence is what makes you know not to put a poster up when there's a girl I just took off my page this morning. I did a show yesterday on my personal page where I'm telling people about Guinea and I'm crying and Guinea And then the heifer goes and posts this morning. You know, you, everybody can be your friend. Just suck it up. She's not talking to me, but emotional intelligence should have told her if she's one of the people that I'm, I talk to and she's a friend. Should have told her, emotional intelligence should have told her that what she posted is going to affect me. Say, what I post is not about you. I'm one of those people, if I read something, I think you're talking to me, 
I will pick up the phone and call you. If I say green and you go to your page and say, and somewhere people who always want to talk about green, I know you're talking to me. If I say black and every day and, and I'm watching you and you're doing the same thing, it shows that you like, if you don't know that you're hurting my feelings, then you lack emotional intelligence. Gina Brown says emotional intelligence can be taught. See, I, emotional intelligence is something that one acquires on, the, on their own. Most people that have emotional intelligence have it because they've been hurt. See, because people troll me and I know what it feels like to be trolled, that's the reason why when I see somebody being trolled, the compassion and the empathy, that thing that triggers that brain, something in my brain that reminds me of what it feels like when somebody trolls me is why I stand up for other people when I see the same thing happening for them. So I don't know if emotional intelligence can be taught, but I know that emotional intelligence can be earned and it's only earned when the same thing happens to people. A lot of the things that we do on social media, we won't do in real life. You know, we won't do in real life. I won't open my door and tell 5,000 people to come in and eat. <laughs> right? But I will post my food on social media because I like to do that. Right? But I will not do, there's a lot that I will not do in real life. I won't show it up in Mr. Brahma's living room and start yelling and start calling his friends' names and start abusing his friends and all that stuff. But on social media, people do that. When you go to, let's say, Jordan's page, right? Let's say you, I, I go to, I'm Jordan's friend, and then Jordan, another friend of Jordan's makes a comment, and I go after that person like crazy, like trolls do. I, I wouldn't do that in our living room. I'll be respectful. I'll be cordial. Your Facebook page, your IG page, your whatever is your living room. Coronavirus has made us realize that more than ever, hasn't it? A lot of us have gone and taken classes online. A lot of us are learning to dance online when we used to go to dance studios. A lot of us don't even leave the house to go shopping anymore. We shop online. We're doing everything online. So it's time that we start to bring our home training with us. I've seen, there was a 22-year-old boy on my page a few days ago that was abusing me, abusing everybody and calling all the women that was saying, oh, you know, don't talk to her like that. You know, um, he called them names and such. So I sent him a message and I said, call me. I want to talk to you. I want you to hear my voice on the other end because that's what I do lately. When I hear, when trollers troll me, I call them. Here you want to abuse me, abuse me to my face. He couldn't. He could not abuse me. We had dialogue and I taped it. And one day I'll play it. We had dialogue and I said to him, you do know I'm human, right? And all those horrible things you said about me, you know nothing about me. Did you Google me? Did you go to my page? Did you listen to some of my videos? Before you decided that I was a devil or I was a child of the devil, did you do research on me? Do you know that I run a not-for-profit organization that helps Nigerians? Do you know anything about what we do? Do you know that the information I'm giving you here, I paid to earn? I paid to acquire. Do you know that a lot of the things I'm giving for free on my shows, I paid to get. He was quiet. He was quiet. Oh, well, I'm just telling you what I know. I said, how did you know it? He said, well, that's a culture. And then I went to tell him about how they used to kill twins and how this was happening and how the world was thought to be flat at one point, And now we know it's round. And I said to him that a lot of you guys, you young people, you lose the opportunity to learn something. You miss your blessings because you come on a page where you could learn something or you could meet somebody that holds the keys to your promised land. But because you don't have etiquette, because you don't have compassion, because you don't have any home training, or you choose to leave your home training at home and not bring it with you, you lose your blessings. Three years ago, Mr. Brimo, I'm sure you remember this one. On, uh, on one of my threads, a young man had inboxed me and said, oh, Antimoji, can you please help me? I'm like, I don't know how I can help you. 
you know, because even if I give you money, you're going to spend it, you know? So how about we get you a job? He's like, yeah, that would be great. Send me his resume. I sent it around to a few friends in Nigeria that are, that are in high places. And he got an interview for Monday. Then I was on my page talking about something and the conversation, my conversations on my page gets heated. One thing is we do it with, you know, I have trained the people on my page. I've weeded, I deleted 3,000 people. Because if we can have debates, if we can have intelligent conversations, even if I don't agree with you, I might learn something different from you. Or I might learn why you think the way you do. I Every opportunity for me is a learning opportunity as far as I'm concerned. But let's do it with respect and dignity, empathy, and emotional intelligence. The guy comes on the thread after he just got an appointment to come and apply for a job, interview for a job where he was going to be getting paid 110,000 or something like that a month, 110,000 a month. He came on the page, the woman that's going to be interviewing him, he didn't realize it was her because in, in you know, or when he spoke to her, she didn't, he didn't catch the last name. So he came there and abused this woman. Well, well, hmm. Honey. He abused her. He dragged her, went to his page and took her name and dragged her too. That's a woman that was supposed to give him a job on Monday. This was on Saturday. The woman is still on my page and I see her here. Yeah. And she inboxed me and said, Moji, I need to talk to you right now. I'm like, oh. She me, I knew what was going on, but I thought she would not recognize the name. I was praying. So she called and she ripped me, ripped me a third one. How could you bring somebody like this around me? Why would you send me a resume for this kind of person? Are you kidding me? These are the same Jaguda boys. The way they behave on social media, they're all thieves. Only thieves that have no responsibility. Only thieves, only 419ers troll people. And it's true. Half the time, the people that are trolling are on the on educated illiterates. The other half, they, half of them are using fake names. These boys with fake names are the ones that usually troll. She ripped me apart and said, don't ever do that. Don't ever call me to give another Nigerian person a job. Ever. That door. Not only did he block his own blessing, he blocked the blessings of many, many other people that I could have helped to get a job through that person. She's here on this, on this thread. You block your own blessing, you block the blessings of a lot of other people when you don't practice emotional intelligence, when you don't practice compassion. Jesus Christ that everybody likes to throw around. Oh, Jesus Christ. In the Bible, in the Bible, honey, Jesus did not write the Bible. Jesus did not have a church. Jesus was the coolest gangster in the world. And I use that word. Jesus was so cool. He hung out with anybody and everybody. They say Jesus never got upset. Honey, Jesus got upset. He got so damn upset. He walked into the synagogue and he threw everybody out. He threw everything out. They tell you Nigerian culture, African culture is crazy. In America, when you're upset, they tell you, feel what you feel, but don't stay there. In our culture, somebody is stepping on my foot. They're telling you, don't mind. Never mind. Never mind. Uh -uh. My toe is about to fall off. They'll tell you, oh, baby, forgive and forget. Just ignore him. Ah, He's been stepping on my toes for three days. The toe is about to get gangrious. Oh, don't worry. Do what Jesus Christ will do, honey. If that's what I say, do you know? what Jesus Christ will do. Because when Jesus Christ walks into a crowd of people, he doesn't save the whole world. He might save one person. When Jesus Christ, when people are saying they're hungry, he doesn't feed everybody. He feeds some people. Think about it. Hi, CJ. Think about it. Everybody wants to quote the Bible and God said this. You were not there. The only thing I know for sure is that God is love. Jesus Christ was so cool that he hung out with people that you and I even would not ever touch. And when we start to treat each other the way we would want to be treated, C.D. Gillette, I think that's the whole, I think the world is going to become better. Gide says the good news is that while some people have EQ as a natural talent, emotional, I think, for those that don't, EQ skills can be learned. Yes, I think so. It can be learned, but they have to be willing, Jide, to learn. 
That's part of the problem. When you're not willing to learn, you're not able to debate. When you're not willing to learn, you're not able to have conversations because somebody's way of living is different from yours. You're not willing to be open to say, okay, oh, I don't like pork, oh, but mm, there must be something about this pork that these people like to eat. Don't give it to me. I don't want it. It's like Christianity. You have people that are Catholics. You have the people that are um, um Methodist, you have people that, you know, there's all types of denominations under the sky. But they don't go around fighting each other, right? As a matter of fact, they might try and steal each other's customers. <laughs> God forgive me. But they don't, they don't really go around fighting each other or trying to kill each other. People can learn how to interact more effectively at work and increase their emotional intelligence. To make this happen, an individual needs to be personally motivated to do so. Yes, GJ. Emotional intelligence is not all we lack as a people. We lack a lot of compassion. A lot of people in 2020, when there's a car crash, sometimes you don't see someone running to help the person, but you see 10 people with their phones out looking to film it. People are walking around looking for a car crash so that it can trend. Let me tell you a funny story. Some I get a lot of videos. People send me a lot of things. People write me a lot and I go through, I counsel a lot of people because I'm a certified life coach. And I started to take this class um, recently about, I'll tell you guys about it when I'm done because I don't want the winches to disturb, disturb me. And the more I learn about this class, the more stuff I see that I've, oh, I, I was so blind to before. So I had this one person sending me videos, sending me videos. One day she sent me a video of somebody that was getting raped in real, like literally real time. Like it was going on. You know how people do something and they put it on social media for the guy was raping the girl in, in Facebook Live. So I'm like, did you call the police of the and she knew the town? It's Facebook Live. Why isn't people reporting this thing to Facebook? Why are you guys not hitting reports, reports, reports. Why didn't somebody pick up the phone and call the police? Absolutely nothing. So I lost it with her. I said, stop sending me this kind of videos. The reason I said stop sending me this kind of videos is, number one, I'm in America. This thing is going on in the UK. Why didn't you guys in the UK call the police? Number two, God forbid, God forbid something happens and I decide I want to run for office. You know, in America, when, they, when you want to run for something fabulous, they go through your past. They go through your phones. They go through everything. And they see a video of somebody having sex on my phone. I will lose credibility. I will lose my job. I will lose, I don't even, I work for myself. I own my own business, but I will lose my clients. That's in America because we have accountability. In Nigeria, anything goes. So they think because they have no laws, they don't follow laws, they don't pay taxes, most people don't pay taxes, most people don't abide by it, most people don't stop at a red sign, even though it's going to save their lives. The reason why the country is so jacked up is because of the people, not the walls and not the roads. If we have want to change, GD already said it, emotional intelligence can be learned. Empathy is not something you learn, no, I'm sorry, it's something you have or you don't have. Now, unconscious bias is something that we all know we have which is where we've heard that all gay people are crazy, they're abominations. So automatically, you don't know me. You don't know anything about me. You don't even know a single thing. Everything you know about me from the past was that Moji is so cool. Moji talks about real things. Moji says it's straight. I'm not going to say things. Everybody's not going to like Moji because I'm not pandering. Everybody's not going to like me because I speak the truth. I'm not going to speak my truth or your truth. The truth. I'm compassionate, I'm empathetic, and my job is to serve. But I will not, I will not allow people to get me into position, places that I cannot look at myself in the mirror for. Never again. So don't send me videos of child pornography that I said to the woman and she got so upset because she didn't understand it. Every time you do something on the internet, there's a paper trail. Every time you do something on the internet, you're leaving footprints. Every time you post something, you make sure your post you can live with. 
If your boss goes to your Facebook page, which a lot of businesses have done and are doing, like I said earlier, before you get an American visa, now they go to your Facebook page to see what you're doing and how you're doing and all that stuff. Emotional intelligence, we keep talking about. It's a lot more than emotional intelligence. You know? Yes. There's an, G.D. Brown says there's, there's a difference between um, an issue and the person. I could, I could stand on the opposite of what I believe in just to create controversy, to create a conversation on my page, and I do it a lot, you know? I could stand on the opposite just because I want people to talk about it. I, I need people to start to open up, you know? But we have to understand that the, the, there's a difference between a person and the topic, right? And, but emotional intelligence also is part of the reasons why we must always, always understand that they're human beings behind our keyboards, you know? Kalija says the long journey of life has a way of impacting experience on those who carefully study happenings and people around them. It teaches people what ordinarily could have never meant anything. Emotional intelligence, like you say, can be acquired sometimes in the way we interacted with life and the marks we get out of that. Not many educated and exposed people possess that. It is a rare gift owned by few. I appreciate that comment by Khadija. Khadija, that's my name, by the way, just so you know, that's my Muslim name. But um, that comment is very important because, and the part for me that really makes a lot of sense is that emotional intel intelligence, um, like you say, can be acquired sometimes in the way we interacted with life. I will take it a bit further, Khadija, and say by the things that happen to us. See, when a rich man is flying his jet plane, and all that stuff. He's, he has a private plane that takes him anywhere in the world. And he can sit and drink his margarita by the beach in Venice. He's not going to understand how the poor guy in the village in Nigeria feels. He's not going to understand why people are hungry because he's eating caviar and whatever. If he wants pizza from Rome and he's in Paris, and he's in Paris he can have it flown down. He's not going to understand that. But imagine a rich man that loses everything. Whoa. And now he's hungry. Now he's going to learn from experience what it feels like. See, the thing that happened in Rant 8Q is exactly a great example of that, Khadija. And I'll tell you why. What happened in Rant HQ, when everybody was abusing everybody in that group, when Susanna Dekoka was abusing Yorubas, when she was dragging me, abusing me, not because I'm a bad person, but because I'm gay, she dragged me, she would put me there, One people would be slaughtering me like crazy, right? The Igbos were there. They didn't say a word. They were part of the people slaughtering me. When Susanna Dekoka said something about a woman, or, 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 was it? I don't know if it was her that said something, but I inboxed her and said, ah, this is not fair. You can't do this. I got on. She supposed that's what they do in Rant HQ. I removed myself because I, it wasn't, it's not what I want from life. That's not how I want to live my life. We're surrounded by animals. But 1.3 million people stayed. You learn emotional intelligence. Igbo people will now learn emotional intelligence in that group because now they have been dragged. See, until something happens to you, sometimes you don't acquire emotional intelligence. You don't acquire empathy. You don't acquire common decency. I'm not praying that everybody falls so they know what it feels like to be the underdog. What I'm saying is that, you know, we all need to start to look at each other and start to practice social media etiquette. Social media etiquette is home training. Uh -uh. Don't go and abuse your elders on social media. Don't just talk bow bow because look, I just saw Khadija's name. I don't know who she is. I don't know what she does for a living. We might never talk past this place, but the next time our path crosses, she will remember that I treated her with respect. She might never even meet me, but she might remember this at one time encounter. But I don't know who Khadija knows. I don't know where Khadija is going. I don't know anything about Khadija. And the way the world works in 2020 is that one link to another human being, the impression that you leave with them down the line somewhere will come 
they'll come up again. Somebody said something to me on my page yesterday. I called five people about this guy. Nobody, none of his five friends had anything good to say about him. You would think that if he had common sense, if they all were friends, they should have told him about himself. So he doesn't go around stinking up his life. Right? Compassion, empathy. Just because somebody's telling me, look, if I did something to you and you tell, come out, Muji, what you did was not cool, okay? Can you come? Yeah? I'll apologize. I'll apologize. The reason I apologize, sometimes I'm not even wrong. But if you say I hurt you, I will apologize. Because my intent was not to hurt you. The intent is not what we're arguing half the time. It's a fact. Look, that you hurt somebody. You might not agree with their principles. You might not agree with their way they live their lives. Leave them alone. You don't like what I say on my page? Block me. Block me. You don't like what I do? Don't come. If I'm serving sushi in my house and you don't eat sushi, don't come to my party. It's such a big world. There's billions and billions of people in the world. Why do you think? Find people that live a life that you are okay with and leave those of us alone. There are men that might, I just saw a video, I posted it on my page. I think I'm gonna share it to the public. There's a guy in Nigeria that had, has 98 wives, 98 wives from the age of 13 to 80 something. The guy is almost 90 something years old. He has 98 wives and 180 children or something like that. 98 wives. Not, not, I can't even, I mean, I thought my dad was like bad mama jama because he had 12 wives, 26 kids, 98 wives. And a 13, 14 year old girl is among his 98 wives. And many, many Nigerians are like that. Yet you guys will go around trolling gay people. Not you guys, but people will go around trolling gay people that have that are in marriages, that are in consenting relationships. But you think it's your birthright to go there and abuse them and troll them and call them names. You think it's your birthright to be to go to somebody else's page and abuse them because they post a picture of them and tell them their child is fat? What kind of world are we living in where we have lost all sense of morality, all sense of compassion? Most people that I, God forgive me, a lot of people, not most, I don't want to get myself and put my foot in my mouth. A lot of people lack emotional intelligence. They lack empathy. They lack compassion. And for it to be taught is one of the reasons why I sit here and I do this show. On Saturday, by the way, we're going to be talking about um, tribalism and um, unconscious bias. Tribalism in Nigeria, which is the same thing as racism in America, and unconscious bias, which is unconscious bias are the biases that we have that we don't even know we have. You know, it's like, you, you, it's because you, you just, it's just in you. And it has nothing to do with, it's partly to do with emotional intelligence, but it's really about the way we grow up, the things we hear, how Yorubas don't like Igbos because of things that they hear because of the war. 30, 40 years later, we never talked about it. So people are still beefing. Emotionally, I mean, unconscious bias is a reason why a lot of Muslims don't understand Christians and Christians don't understand Muslims because we're not talking to each other. We're talking at each other. A lot of uh, um, unconscious bias is the reason why now a lot of Nigerians will come on my page and start talking about, oh, you're going to hell, you're going to an abomination, you're this because you're gay. And then, and then you ask them, what did I do to you? How does my life affect yours? And they can't tell you. They want to quote the Bible. They can't tell you what it is about me or what I've done to them that makes them so miserable to the point that because they're miserable, they have to come to me. That's unconscious bias and hurt me. People are killing themselves because of the way people in, interact on social media. I have had many hard days when I get off this show or when I get off my pages. But one thing I know 
is that for all of you guys that can hear my voice, all 22 of you, right? If you guys start talking in your groups, if you start talking with your friends, if you start using those words, unconscious bias, if you start telling them, oh, catch them, say, oh, you know, all the Yoruba people are, ah, mm, they're this, they're that, mm -mm. and you check them and say, no, don't use all, maybe some, or maybe just people. Some people are like this, some people are like that. You know, when we start having these dialogues and conversations amongst ourselves, that's how we change people. We don't change people by being on a thread where they're cutting moji up and people are not saying anything. By the way, for those of you guys that came and stood up for me on my public page the other day, shuku to all of you. I am so proud of you because you are joining the, you're joining the army of the universe. Do you are you are the ones that are called um, bystander interventions. You guys are the real MVPs. You guys are the ones that are fighting for human rights by not staying quiet. I'm not saying go and abuse them all. I'm saying go to the page and pull their coattails because a lot of times we don't know they're out of line. And when they do something too crazy, just report their fake account, oops, fake account, oops. Facebook will take them up and not, not always fake accounts. If it's a fake account, they're fake account. But if it's one of those places where they're abusing people, just report them to, to Facebook, hit report, report this account and then report them exactly for what they're doing. If they're being homophobic, put homophobic. If uh, you don't know, I, I know how to close, shut down people's accounts. If you come from me, I'm coming from you full speed, but we all can change. I have learned so much from being on social media, from other people. A lot of my views were very myopic. It was very, and that's because of, you know, I didn't know a lot about the Nigerian culture. I didn't know a lot about the Nigerian people. I didn't know a lot about how we became, even became Nigeria. It wasn't until a few years ago, I learned that it was all a bunch of little, little, um, you know, and, uh, tribes or whatever, or ethnicities that had their own little, like Benin had their own Oba, this one, they were all their own things on their own. And then somebody just came and said, okay, all of you guys get together. That's it, and we'll call you Nigeria. Without any reconciliation, without anyone asking anyone if they want to be part of it. You know, so there's a lot, a lot, a lot going on out there. But authentic conversations is what we need to have. If when we start having authentic conversations with each other, then we can go, we'll find that people, emotional intelligence will be shared. When you bring it up to somebody that, oh my God, you just did not practice any emotional intelligence with the way you spoke. Next time before they type, they'll think about, oh, emotional intelligence. They might type it, read it, reread it, redo it, and decide if they really want to say that. And is it going to come across? Should I call this person and have a valid conversation with them? Because I do it all the time. I call people. And I always encourage people to call me when I'm on the show. You can call me when I'm on the show and talk to me. I have no problem with it. You know, Saturday's show is going to be really, 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 really fantastic. Be the, be the chick, tro see, that's another name. That's, I, I know that's not your real name. I know it's hard to have a real conversation with a person that's called be the chick, trush, be, be a, blah, 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 I can't say the name. I know, I, I, God forgive me, but I don't think that's your name. That's another problem here. Because I'm having a conversation with a ghost. If that's your real name, forgive me, but I don't think that's your real name. But emotional intelligence was a course I embarked on in the first phase of lockdown. It is very interesting course, I must confess. I've taken that class and I have taken I've taken that class. I, I took that class with another school. Part of yeah, yeah. But we're not gonna talk about the classes I'm taking. I'm gonna wait till I'm done and then I'll blast it all over the place. But bottom line is that yes, it's it is a it's it is a class. And the more educated you become, right? Be the chick. The more educated you become, as in the more wisdom you attain, it's like you take off your glasses and your glasses were purple. So everything in the world was purple, right? When you took the emotional intelligence class, I'm sure that when you go on social media, because that's when I started to use the word emotional intelligence. When you don't know something, it's kind of hard to catch yourself. You know, before I post anything now, I think, ah, is this emotionally intelligent? Is this unconscious bias? 
Is this inclusion and diversity? Is I mean, I, before I post it, who am I going to hurt? I used to do a slap slap joke because I did stand up for many, many years. I used to do a slap slap joke, be that, be that check. I used to do a slap slap joke. And I'll go on and say slap, slap. And, 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 and then I realized I was hurting people, so I stopped it. Now my jokes are all about me. My 12 strengths are here because I, I was a comedian for many years. So my jokes are about me not anybody else. But emotional intelligence is a very, very important thing. And it, there's, edu there's um, courses out there that you can take, but it's basic common sense, really. People are just not paying attention. And thank you for sharing that. And I hope, I, I'm gonna, I, I need to find out if that's your real name, really, because I've never seen a name like that. But thank you for sharing that. It is a very, very, very interesting course. I'm about to shut down. Um, Khadija says, I have picked up, picked interest in some of your discussions and I started following you. Thank you. I am a Nigerian. I'm an activist, peace building practitioner. I am learning tolerance even when I disagree because intolerance is why Nigeria is so divided. Shukur to you, my sister. It's very true. Tolerance comes with emotional intelligence. Tolerance comes along with empathy. Tolerance comes along with compassion. You know, we are all bleeding. When I cut myself, I bleed the same way like the white man. I bleed like the same like Khadijat. They take it from a gay person and they put it in the heart of a Muslim person and it beats and it saves the lives of the Muslim person. Tolerance, compassion, empathy, emotional intelligence. Those are things that we need to go back to. Social media is not the wild, wild west. Social media is now the living room the bedroom, social media is now the kitchen because the shopping malls, the movie theater, that's where, social media is where we all meet these days. I went to a few parties on social media. I was going to throw one the other day and I said, nah, it's too complicated. But there's so much we need to bring with us to engage with others so we can all learn, so we can all grow, so we can all teach each other something. It's very important that we just don't waste our lives talking bow bow. Ola Dele, I think it's be that chick. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. See, I just learned something. You got to be open. Got to be open. Be that chick. I just learned something. Thank you, Ola Dele. We have to be open and understand nobody, we, people are not there to hurt you. Conversation. I might not agree with something Jordan says. I might not agree with what something Oladele says. I might not agree with your lifestyle. I might, but come on now, we can all get along. Let's be real. It's important that we start to be empathetic, compassionate. Don't wait till somebody stabs you like they do me to know that it's the wrong thing to do. You don't need to do that. You don't need to suffer because you rather hurt other people because you're hurting. I'm a certified life coach. I've been through so much therapy in my lifetime. I could be a therapist myself. So why did I go get my certified life coach certificate? So that I could learn how to counsel others. So I could learn how to get people to be the best version of themselves like I did. So I could do this show intelligently. I took classes. You can too. Be that chick said she took a class on emotional intelligence. You can too. Because when we all become educated, see education is one of the most important things in life. And these days you, don't, you can Google anything, you can listen to so much stuff online. You can go to YouTube and listen to TED Talks and improve the quality of your life and improve the way you engage with people and improve your emotional intelligence just by having conversations authentic conversations. Saturday, let's meet up again, please. Let's meet up because Saturday, this Saturday I'll be bringing on people from different ethnic backgrounds. Please share this video so people know. When I put the poster up later, please do me a favor, you guys, and share it. We have to start to heal the pain, the brokenness in a lot of our African brothers and sisters all over the world. We have to start healing so that we can stop bleeding into each other and stabbing and hurting each other. Hurt people hurt people. I know people are suffering in Nigeria, so they, a lot of times people act like barbaric barbarians online. 
I can't do Twitter because you go to Twitter, it's all these young youth and they come at you and cut you into a million pieces. But if maybe if we start healing, if we start having authentic conversations with each other and I can tell you where you hurt me and how I hurt you, maybe you'll see where I'm coming from. We might not agree, but at least you'll see where I'm coming from. Maybe you'll feel my pain in my voice if I'm able to speak to you. Authentic Conversations is the name of the show, Moji's World. My name is Moji Solo Wilson. I thank you guys so much for joining me. Time is gone. I can't believe we went over time today. But do me a favor, share the video, let the world know that we're here. This show is for growing. This show is about transformation. This show is about us all having a better tomorrow. My name is Moji Solo Wilson. Namaste. Thank you for coming. Thank <laughs> you.